everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. I am getting my stuff together here. And uh, I thought I would uh, sit down with you all. I had some questions in the past about some of the processes that I go through uh, when I make a knife. And uh, in the past, I did do some uh, knife making 101 videos. And it wasn't just how to actually make a knife. It was some of the things that would be uh, involved with being a knife maker, hobbyist, or you know, trying to make it a little small business or something like that. Uh, so I started doing some of it. And then I got busy, of course, and life gets ahead of us. And uh, then I just got you know caught up and I forgot all about it. And I have a whole bunch of knives back here I'm working on, actually. I'll take you back here and show you. Um, I have a whole bunch of knives here that I'm working on. And right here, and I've got a couple of Jaspers. I got a Montana and stainless steel. And then I have a uh, two uh, Kiritsukis in stainless steel and a chef's knife in stainless steel. And the chef's knife, a little while ago, I did the taper tang on this. Um, and it wasn't too bad, sorry, I, I would adjust the uh, auto here. Let's hear, doo doo. Um, I did a taper tang a little while back when I was working on some other knives, including the, uh, a Kiritsuki, and um, I got to thinking, you know, I, I should really just do a little video on, you know, doing a taper tang. How do I do it? How was I taught? How do I do it? And how, how do I teach people uh, when they come in to do a knife making class with me? And uh, as well as if somebody wanted to, you know, get into knife making themselves. So I thought this would be a great time to introduce you to tapering a tang freehand, no jig. So let me get you down here and let's get started. Okay. So hopefully this video is finding you all well, and hopefully some of you might find this interesting. Um, what we're going to start with here is a coyote pup. That's right. This is a coyote pup in D2, and uh, it's already been shaped, as you can see here. It's already been shaped. Uh, holes are in a tang. Uh, it, the edges have been cleaned. There's a choil in there. It's been stamped with my maker's mark. Everything's ready to rock and roll. But we have to be able to do a taper tang on this, as well as a blade profile. And in doing that, one of the first things I do is after I clean everything up, I, I put what's called blue dicum. It's a blue steel die. I put that across the edge all the way around the knife. And what that does is when I scribe the edge of the steel, that little, those little scribe marks, those, those marks pop a lot more in the blue than it is just being raw steel. Now, one of the things that I do, I wasn't taught to do this, I just kind of learned it on my own, is when I get ready to do scribing and uh, do blade profiles and taper tangs, I take this edge down to 120 grit. Uh, that means I'll go on old, uh, well, not, I was about to say old Frankenstein. Frankenstein, oh, rest in peace. Uh, I take it over to the grinder there, to Black Fox, and uh, um, I just start cleaning this edge up. And that's pretty much when I'm done. The knife is at its completed shape. Everything's pretty much rocking, rocking and rolling, but I just take 120 grit and I just clean this whole edge up really quick. And then what I'll do is after, after doing that in a grinder, you get a little bit of burr on the edge. And I just hit that with a file and I just go ahead and I clean all that up. So this way I have soft edges to do my scribing. And now touching on the, the, the blue, the steel uh, die here, um, you don't have to do dicum, dicum. I've had this f for pretty much four years this this little bottle right here now it's, it's getting empty it's probably like down to here but it doesn't take a lot it lasts a long time it's the actual spray uh that doesn't last as long because the spray is what i use to do a whole bar of steel when i'm drawing out the layout of each individual type of knife uh whether it's the holes to, to drill the holes and stuff or whether it's just the actual shape itself of the knife i use steel blue or spray, and I use blue. So anyhow, so I got my blue uh, dicum here, and uh, you just want to go ahead and you want to apply the uh, blue dicum on the edge of the steel, um, and not aggressive. You want to put this on uh, fairly light, but just so you got a nice coat all the way around, and then just let it dry for a little bit. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is uh, use a scribe. Now, there's a couple of different kinds out there. There are some that um, look similar to this, this little one right here. Um, this has a little uh, adjusting wheel, and then there's a set screw that you pull in and out, and that will help adjust the uh, little needle that's on here. The needle, I believe it's it's like a tungsten or something like that. It's a uh, titanium something. I forgot what it was. I've had this thing for four or five years now, and uh, at least five years. And uh, um, it's really sharp, it's a really good point, and it really marks well on stainless steel and, and D2 and, 
S35 VN and and 154 C you know CM154 154 CM CPM154 stuff like that. Um, and what you do is you want to adjust this. Now you want to adjust the needle to where you can when you put this on your knife, you're going to basically put this part right here that I'm holding. That part's going to go along your knife and you're going to scribe that little edge is going to mark a line all up and down the spine of your knife and along the belly of the blade and along the belly of the handle here, the tank. Um, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you do that, your lines are fairly um, uh, far apart, but you don't want them too far apart. Now, what, I'm, what I want to do too is uh, really quickly, I'm going to touch on this. I'm going to do a test scribe right here to show you guys. And that's what you want to do. Um, to get back into the scriber again, um, this is one of the scribers. I don't think I mentioned all of them. This is one of the scribers here. There is a wheel right here that loosens and tightens. This right here, if I turn this, this will loosen this brass part so this brass part will slide up and down. Why you want that to happen is, is if you want this to loosen, what you're trying to do is you're trying to adjust this little tip right here. Hopefully it'll come out well in the camera. That little tip right there, you want to adjust that to see whether it goes out like to my right or in towards my left, in towards the scribe handle itself, the scribe backing. This here actually adjusts that distance. So when you loosen this and you turn that, you set this little Allen key in here and you put that you put inside that little set screw and you turn this, this will pull, it'll, it'll push against that and pull the pin down. So hopefully that makes sense. So what you do is you make a test sample, you, you make that and you wanna find your distance. And here I found my distance and hopefully this'll, you'll be able to see this okay. You can see that line, let's see here, if we can see that line, there's a the line right there. You, does that gap come out okay, you see that line? There we go. That's really good. That's what I want to see. It's not too far away and it's not too close. I can work with that. Uh, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and I'll taper this tank and then uh, we'll head out over into the grinding room. Okay, real quick, one of the other things I wanted to touch on is right before you go to get started is um, I use this paint marker and what I'll do is I'll just draw a little line. You'll see right here. I'll, I'll just draw a little line where kind of where my scales are going on the knife. And what this is meant to do, it is meant to give me kind of a reference point to how far it is I want to take my, my taper tang out to, how, how far I want my grind to go out. And you'll see more in a little bit of what that means. Uh, so now, getting to the Black Fox here, i got to swap this out. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start with a 40 grit belt. Uh, I go with a 40 grit, I go with an aggressive ceramic, a shredder. Um, I get my belts mostly from uh, uh, Phoenix Abrasive. Um, I'll leave a link or something down below if I remember. Remember, goofball, put it down there. I talk to myself sometimes. <laughs> uh, I get my belts from them. I start with a 40 grit. That really starts to hog off a lot of material and get it done. And then I go to an 80 grit and then I'll go to a 120 and that's where I'll stop regarding the, uh, the, the grinder. So. Let me get the grinder set up and then uh, I'll show you what we start. Okay guys, you're set up there. Okay, um, I got the Black Fox 1 all set up ready to rock and roll. Uh, what's really nice about the Black Fox 1, uh, it rotates on its axis. It's really cool and it has a forward and reverse, meaning that when I use this grinder, when it's in its vertical position and I put it on forward, the belt is going in that direction right there. So it's going down into the bucket and going down around that way. But when I use it for a taper tang, I prefer to have it go counterclockwise, going off to my left. And the reason why is when I taper a tang, I want my support hand, which is my left hand, I want my support hand to get the knife and I want the knife and the pressure of the grinder to push into my support hand. If it goes to the right, if it's going this way in its downward position, it's pulling the knife from my hand. Now you might think you can just hold on to it, but that's where we're gonna to get to. You don't want to hold on to the blade with a death grip. I literally hold on to it with just pretty much these three fingers, sometimes just these two fingers. And I can do that because I use this, this very super expensive uh, jig here. It's, it's a piece of wood. It's a block of wood that's been cut and shaped. I kind of sanded it down a little bit on the grinder to, to soften its edges and everything. And I drilled a hole and I put a bolt in it. I think that's a 5 16 bolt I put inside there and uh, I cut the head off of it. So this bolt goes all the way down into here. 
The reason why is um, when I do my taper tangs, I want to have some pressure on the steel itself to push against, uh, push against the grinder. In doing that, I can use this. This goes into the holes that I drill into the tang. This will go into there, and then I can hold onto it like a handle. And then if I want to apply pressure going this way or this way, if I want to push downward pressure or upward pressure, this allows me to do that. Um, as well as it helps me control more than just using my one hand like this. So again, it was just something I was taught five years ago how to do, and it's been working great for me. Now, there are um, jigs and systems out there on the market, something like a surface grinder even, that if you could afford one, first one, if you can afford one, then you can attach that to your grinder if your grinder is capable of doing that. And then what you have to do is adjust your angle on your grinder to, to be able to do that, or maybe the angle on the uh, surface grinding attachment. I've never used one, so I don't know. I've never even bothered looking one up. I don't do jigs. I don't do jigs for blade profiles. I don't do jigs for taper tanks. It's just who I am and what I do. Uh, but um, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and get started again. 40 grit belt. That's going to help hog away the material. I did those uh, uh, Sharpie marks right there with the paint marker. There's one right there and there's one right there. That gives me a general idea of how far I want my grind to go. So I have my bucket set up. Don't forget you need a YouTube bucket. <laughs> and uh, you got your grinder going. I got my little uh, light here that helps me see really good. I'm gonna go get my uh, vest on, my smock, and uh, we'll get you in closer and we'll start tapering this tank. Uh, right before I get started, I thought I'd show you again and touch into what I'm talking about uh, pressure, upward pressure and downward pressure. In my video that I did uh, describing how you do uh, your plunge line and doing your blade profiles, uh, I'll try to remember to link that up above, uh, but it'll be in this uh, Knife Making 101 playlist. What you're doing here is you have the belt and you have your grinder. And what you wanna do is I'm gonna start here at the end. I'm starting at the furthest end of the flat platen right here. I'm literally gonna use the first inch of the flat platen and I'm gonna apply pressure in here. And in doing so, I wanna make sure that I'm applying even pressure, even flat pressure that I'm not turning the belt or the blade this way or this way. So what I do is I go the first inch or two I'll pull it off and I wanna see, do I have, uh, if I have too much pressure, downward pressure, too much of a twist going down here, my grind line will go off on an angle like this. If I have too much upward pressure going this way on my thumbs, then the grind line will be on an angle like that. What you wanna do is you're shooting for an even, parallel or a perpendicular grind line to your blade, your spine. You wanna go like this and you're gonna slowly work that all the way up to here. And now it's key to remember that you have your scribe lines here on your on the back of your tang. So what you have to do is you have to remember that at 40 grit, I'm gonna hog away material pretty quickly. I only wanna go so far. And I also wanna keep an eye on how close to the, the scribe lines I'm getting because remember, we still have 80 grit and then we have 120 grit to go yet. So the closer to that you get, then you have to remember the closer to this scribe line to center the further up the knife you have to be to get to your finished uh, location. That's your finished spot right in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some grinding. I'll let you guys watch, try to get you some angles on what I'm doing, and then uh, I'll come back and we'll see what I'm doing so far. Okay, real quick, what I want to stop and show you now, you gotta make sure you quench it. Don't let your steel start turning rainbow colors and everything else. You don't want that to happen. Um, I wanted to show you, hopefully I can get you in, and I might move you down here a little bit to get a light. Uh, what I did so far is I have an even grind, as you see right here, and right here, that line. Now, I might have showed you um, when I had the knife this way, I, I applied a little bit more pressure one way than the other so I can show you what it looked like at an angle. I did that a couple of times, so hopefully I, I managed to get that in there or it showed up good. Showed up good. Cause I wanted to show you what it would look like if you apply too much pressure. And again, touching on the uh, 101 of the blade profile part, 
it's really about the two things. Once you saw how I was holding my knife, the blade edge, the point at this part, I'm holding with two or three fingers right there. And this allows me to keep control of the knife, but I'm not forcing the knife. If you muscle the knife, if you get your whole hand on it, you don't have good control because as you grab the knife in here at the swell of your hand and you grab it, the knife wants to shift a little bit in and out of that. You don't get a really good positive feel. Sometimes it might sit on the inside of your pad, sometimes on your pad, sometimes in your crack and the knuckles right here. You don't want that. You get very inconsistency. And by taking, by muscling it, by getting too much into it, too, you're getting too angry with it. This you want to chill. You want to relax. You, you're, I'm staying really relaxed in the shoulders. I'm keeping my arms tight to my body, but I'm not tense. Like I said, the only thing that gets to me about grinding, it's the constant head down repet repetition. You know, when I'm in here doing four, five, six tapered tangs in a day, it, it wears on you after a while. I mean, I can stand up and it cracks, your whole back cracks. But um, so what we have here is we have a blade profile, or we have the, the grind right here, and then we have the grind right there. You see how even that is? That's what I was shooting for right there. Now, uh, let's see if you can get this taper tang. Hopefully you guys will see that. No, the light's not good enough. Here, let me bring it down here. There we go, right there. You see that? See the scribe lines? Those are my scribe lines right there. And you can see how I have practically the an exact even and out. I mean, looking at it through my glasses, I have a pretty good gap between the, the top that you're looking at and the bottom right there. So that's really good. That's what we're shooting for. Okay, so that's where we're at now. You don't want to get much closer to that because remember, we have... We have another, we have, I have to go from, I went from uh, 40 grit, I'm going to go to 80, and then I'm going to go to 120. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish that up and uh, get this all cleaned up, and then I'll bring you guys back in. I'll throw some B-roll footage in here of what I'm doing, and then hopefully uh, this will help a little bit. But remember, equal distance, in a way, in the lack of a better term, from your grind line, your scribe, I should say your scribe line of center, to where you're going to finish right here. So you don't want to go all the way over to this and have a bunch of material back here. That wouldn't be good because then you're going to have to start back here again and you're going to have to work all this material off with a lesser grit, like a, an 80 or a 120. And you'll burn through belts before you get a perfect grind all the way across. So this is a good way to start. The other thing is too is tapering a tang, it leads you to two things. One, as you guys are seeing, it, it, it takes a little finesse, takes some time and it takes a lot of practice but it shows the care of a knife maker freehanding a, a taper tang like this. As you guys see, I'm taking time out and it'll take me about a half hour or so to do a taper tang, depending on the tang, uh, but it's, uh, it's about a half hour, 35, 40 minutes, somewhere in there, uh, depending on the knife size. But that's time that I'm taking out to, to put me into your knife. And that's why I like freehanding. That's why, that's why I really think it's very important because as, as uh, uh, muddled as the knife industry is, as the knife world is, and everybody wants to get into it, we all have our niches. Uh, there's guys that do some phenomenal file work all along their spines and their knives. I mean, th that's their niche. There's guys that do bolsters. They have these neat bolsters and they do this work. That's their niche, That it's awesome. Guys will use a lower grade steel like 1085, 1095, 1084, and they'll do hormones, like that clay across the, the, the spine of the knife and they'll heat treat it that way that gives it that, that ghosting kind of pattern. That's their niche. You can't take thunder, you can't steal their thunder. You gotta give those guys kudos. This is my kudo. I am a very big proponent to handmade. Doing as much as you can with your two hands, holding on to this knife and getting in there and, and owning it and putting a little bit of yourself into each customer's knife. So I'm gonna stop babbling, I'm gonna get this going and then I'll bring you back in with the finished product. success success gang so we have a cleaned even taper tank 
hopefully you guys will see these scribe lines. You see these? Let's see that. Can you see that? See that line right there down the middle? There you go. Let's see. Let's see if I can get. Make sure the camera's focusing on on that. Right there. See that? There you go. That's what you want. A nice pointy tang, just like that. Doesn't want to focus on the tang anymore. There we go. Let's see here. Focus on the tang, silly camera. There we go. That just doesn't want to do it. There we go. There we have. Look at that point. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty. And again, there you go. Perfect lines down there. You want to follow those scribe lines all the way down to a point. And we stopped at our grind. That was where the marker came to. That marker came around here. Now this this was uh, uh, this is Schaefer's knife. So in my defense, this is Schaefer's knife uh, <laughs> because there's a few things that I would change on this knife. <laughs> no dig on Schaefer. Schaefer's doing a good job. This was his first one, actually. He did his mild steel, but um, that he learned that tapering tangs and were, wasn't his thing just yet. So um, he wanted me to do his knife and taper tang, and I'm gonna do the blade profile next. But um, I wanted to share that with you all. So pretty much after this is I end up doing the blade profile. I'm not going to do another video on that. You'll have to check out that video up above here, uh, here, here, whichever I'm looking at it here. Uh, but uh, you'll have to check that video out again, how to address the, uh, the belt and your platen and doing your blade profile and canting. Same principles to that hole in the taper tang. The taper tangs are easier though because it's just this one straight line. You're not trying to grind in and fade and do all that other stuff with a blade profile. So. After I do my blade profile again at uh, 40, 80, and 120 grit, I am done. I go in there and I start hand sanding it. I'll hand sand at 120, 220. Uh, that's usually where I stop. At 120 to 220, I think Schaefer's is going to be hand sanded brushed finish. So that'll be a 220 brushed finish. And then uh, it'll be cleaned up, wrapped in a hot pocket, and sent into heat treat with a couple other knives, like the Jaspers or something like that. So again, thank you all very much. Leave the comments down below if you got any questions or concerns or gripes, moans, groans, and complaints. If you want to reserve those complaints, I'm fine. Yes, look, I'm wearing a different hat. You know who that's for. <laughs> Anyhow, gang, I do appreciate it. It's been amazing. What, uh, uh, that 10,000 subscriber thing? Boy, that was something else. Uh, that was pretty cool. So again, thanks for all the love. Thanks for all the support. It, it's quite humbling guys thank you very much and hopefully this will help some new inspiring knife maker or at least someone that wants to do this as a hobby or maybe come here for a class one day till next video you guys take it easy have a good one we'll see you later goodbye